Hi everyone and welcome to Biotech Tips. My name is Jason and today we'll be talking about a piece of equipment that you might come across on your day to day in the lab, the thermocycler. Let's say it's your first day in a genetics lab and you come across something like this. It looks like a weird hybrid of a computer and a kitchen appliance. But what you've actually come across is an integral piece of equipment for polymerase chain reactions. This is a thermocycler. This is also a thermocycler. Otherwise known as a PCR machine, this piece of lab equipment is responsible for cycling and maintaining the temperatures needed for the amplification of DNA. Thermocyclers can vary dramatically in visual appearance depending on their manufacturer. However, they all function in much the same fashion. All thermocyclers utilize variable temperatures to amplify a DNA strand, often by a degree of millions or billions for the detection of a specific gene or genetic sequence. These amplified samples can then be visualized using gel electrophoresis, sent off for further sequencing, or cloned into a plasmid for experimentation. While some of the first thermocyclers utilize water baths, these modern ones will actually utilize heated thermistors, which can then be programmed to follow a specific pattern of both heating and cooling. These heating elements are then connected to both the lid and the sample blocks to ensure that the samples are both heated evenly and throughout. Additionally, the lid will press down on the sample to prevent any condensation from forming or the evaporation of the sample. Now, how exactly does this reaction take place? Well, there's a few key ingredients that are needed for your sample. Those are gonna be your primers, your template DNA, your TAC polymerase, and your nucleotides. All your ingredients are then assembled into a small tube like this. Once your sample has been fully prepared, it can then be subjected to repeated cycles of heating and cooling to allow new DNA strands to be synthesized. The basic steps of a PCR cycle can be summed up like this. Step one, denaturation where the sample is heated at a high temperature to separate or denature the DNA strands themselves. This results in a single-stranded DNA template that's needed for the next step. Step two is you're gonna be annealing, where the reaction is then cooled so that the primers can then bind their complementary sequences on a single-stranded DNA template. Step three is gonna be your extension, where the reaction temperatures are then raised again so that TAC polymerase can then extend the primers and thus synthesizing new strands of DNA. This cycle will repeat about 25 to 35 times, which generally takes anywhere from about two to four hours, depending on the length of the DNA region that was copied. It's during this time that your DNA sample can go from one or a few to billions. This is because it's not just the original sequence that's being copied. The new DNA that's made in each round can then serve as a template for the next one effectively doubling the amount of sample for each round of cycle. This pattern of exponential growth can look a little bit like this. Now, once complete, the samples themselves should have more than enough DNA to easily test or visualize the results. This allows for the identification of a specific gene, depending on their base pair weights in Dalton's via electrophoresis, or by utilizing a rapid response test to determine if a sample is either positive or negative for a specific genetic sequence or region. And that's what this thing is. Thank you all for joining me today, and I hope you learned a little bit about this piece of equipment and its usefulness in the lab environment, as well as the process that it facilitates. If you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. And once again, my name is Jason, and thank you for watching.